Okay, today's lesson is section 1.5, solving equations and inequalities with limited domain. Um, so our objective today is to solve inequations and inequalities with a limited domain. So we've already done a little bit with quadratics, we've done a little bit with some inequalities, we've done some linear equations. What we're going to do now is talk about um, the domain um, with respect to our solution set. So um, let's start off with problem number one here. So I, I literally solve this problem just like I normally would. So I'm going to distribute, combine like terms, and solve, and my solution is negative 14. Now, when I answer here, this portion over here, part A asks me to, within the restricted domain of all reals, I need to form my solution. So what I do is I put brackets. This is going to represent our solution set here. And I want to check, is negative 14 a real number? It is, so this is part of my solution. Now, part B says I only want integers. So again, I make my brackets and I say, okay, is negative 14 an integer? It is, so it is also part of my solution. So it does belong in the solution set. Okay, now in part C, though, um, it's asking only for positive reals. So we have to decide, is negative 14 a positive real? Since it is not a positive real, we have an empty set. We can also denote this with no solution because there are no valid solutions within this restricted domain. Now, I'm going to let you do problems 2, 3, and 4. Um, since these are just a review of some quadratics that we've already done, um, just make sure that you're looking at this in respect to these domains here and you're answering um, according to the domains, limited domains that you're given. You can check your answers with the answer key that's posted on the site. Okay, so go ahead and flip over your paper. Um, we're going to work now with inequalities with a limited domain. So I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time with this. Um, I'm going to do each problem here because I feel like these domains are a little bit more challenging when you have to write the solution set. So um, what's nice about these is that it, you've already done so solving linear inequalities, so we can go ahead and solve this just like normal. And here we get a solution of x is greater than negative 1. So when I graph this, with respect to my limited domain here, which is, happens to be um, all reals. That means that I can just graph this like normal. Okay. Now when I do part B here, since it's asking for non-negative reals, that means that this portion of your graph up until zero, right, because zero is also non-negative, these values don't work. These are all negative values that are found in here. So that means when I graph this, I actually want to start with 0 and graph beyond that. Now you got to think about this, is 0 non-negative? And if so, it should have a closed circle on 0. Since it is non-negative, I'm going to place a closed circle here. So this would be my solution with respect to this limited domain of non-negative reals. Okay, now in problem number 6, I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to solve this here. and I get my solution of x is greater than or equal to negative one-half. Again, when I graph this with respect to all reals, I'm going to have a normal graph here since negative one-half is a real number as well as all values greater than or equal to it. Now in part b, we are asking only for integers. So we have to think, what is the next integer um, greater than negative one-half? Okay, since negative one half is not an integer, this value here will not be included. Okay, the next integer value would be zero. So I'm going to graph, and starting at zero, I'll have a closed circle on zero. Now, none of the other numbers between zero and one are valid because my domain limits it to just integers. So now I'm going to do one and put a closed circle on it. I continue this a few times, showing that only integers are valid in this limited domain. So as you can see, uh, the graphs and the way your solution is going to look are very different depending on what your, your uh, limited domain is. So you want to make sure that you're really thinking about it consciously about what numbers are allowed and what numbers aren't. All right, like right, let's wrap this up now with number seven. So in number seven, I'm going to add three to either side here, or these 
uh, of this combined inequality, or compound inequality, I should say. And I'm going to multiply by 2 throughout to get negative 6 is less than or equal to x is less than 3. So when I graph this with respect to over here all reals, I have a closed circle on negative 6, open circle on 3, and all the values in between as part of my solution set. Now when I move on to positive reals though, now here's where you have to start thinking about what is allowed and what's not allowed in your uh, graph. So if we look at our, our previous solution here, negative 6 is obviously not a positive real. So from negative 6 all the way up until we hit 0, these values are negative. Therefore, we completely uh, eliminate them from our solution, from our graph. So. I'm going to show that we're getting rid of those values here. Okay. Now, we know it's going to be an open circle still on 3. But from 0 to 3, I want to shade these in, because these are all representing positive reals. Now you have to ask yourself, is 0 a positive or a negative real? Okay, so 0 is non-positive. It is also non-negative. It is neither. Therefore, since it is not positive, we have to leave this as an open circle. And there's your solution for this one.